one of the most important concepts that's involved in this next training drill is how I'm shifting my weight here. Notice the block I'm using, the leg block, and the hand stopping action, the stop block. This stop block is not necessarily only used for low kicks. It's an extremely effective method for jamming your opponent's techniques. Here I'm showing the balance that's involved here. I'm using a forward leaning balance almost as if I'm going to fall forward and I catch and regain my balance with the lead leg. If you watch from this side, I'm using the palm heel with the shifting of the weight and then the leg block. There's an extensive section on leg blocking techniques on my Iron Defense video. Here you'll see the integration of the stop block. Watch carefully. As my opponent attacks with a low kick, I'm going to use a forward motion with my palm heel and jamming with the leg. Watch carefully the timing and what happens to the opponent also after I apply the technique. From this angle, we'll see as he attacks, I react immediately. I'm jamming and pushing off balance. Now that palm heel could be a jab, it could be a grab, it could be a setup for combinations as I'm throwing here. The stop block. Now we'll move to what I like to call full power conditioning drills. This is the quote secret that's probably not really discussed when it comes to low kicks is being able to throw and take full power kicks. Because unfortunately, sometimes the only kick you might have time to use is being able to take the kick. So what's important here is that you're learning how to tighten your body at the point of impact. So there's a timing element involved here. What you saw previously was the inside thigh kick, and now we're using the outside thigh kick. Full power blows creating a sense of urgency when it comes to tightening the body and keying or using the spirit shout to avoid further injury. One of the most important elements, if you don't have time to block, is that you shift your weight properly. What I'm doing here is actually pushing into the kick so that he cannot follow through effectively. If I go back this way, shifting the weight to my back leg, I've created a very suicidal situation for myself my knees can break very easily that way. So I want that forward motion in there. In this drill, although it looks similar, is the counter-attacking portion of this drill. As I attack with my lead leg, he has to follow up quickly before I can get off another technique. So the objective here is to be able to take the pain and give it immediately. Probably one of the most important concepts in fighting here. Notice, if he doesn't follow up quickly, I may be in big trouble. Again, as I attack, he follows up quickly. He's trying to kick me before I reestablish my stance. Again, all with full power implied. Now we're changing the techniques. As I attack the inner thigh, my partner attacks the outer thigh. Again, if I don't re-chamber and reposition myself quickly, he can take me off balance. Notice, as I kick, I bring back my foot and get into the stance right away, and then absorb the kick on my thigh. Here we're looking at a freestyle version of what I just did. Full power blows. Again, there is some degree of control here, because we know what's coming. It's a low kick, but we don't know with which leg or how many combinations. The last minute or so you just saw here with this low kick drilling is probably the most important when it comes to low kicks. Because of the distance that's involved, you may not have time to block effectively, so you may have to take the kick. And there's a whole science in learning how to take it also, as I just showed you here. Proper tightening of the body as the kick is being thrown at you, shifting, etc. Now I move into a slightly different topic. I showed you five extremely effective hooking techniques on volume one. Here's an application of a gripping method to trapping the opponent's head. This is a grip that was fully explained 
on the fundamental concepts to grappling and ground fighting tape. This grip here allows you to control your opponent's head as you maneuver and throw the low kicks. Now with a partner, you can see the trapping aspect here. You can easily move into grappling range from here or manipulate your opponent's head so that you can drive the knees, whether into the rib cage, to the thigh area, or to the solar plexus. The next variation, or the advanced integration of that gripping move, is going into a, what I like to call a palm heel manipulation. As I apply the grip, I may not be able to maneuver with the grip held on, so I have to let go and maneuver with the palm heel redirecting the opponent's head. Another topic, the groin kick, although usually demonstrated with the instep as I show here, usually does not occur as easily in a real fight. The distance will allow you probably more or less to use the shin area. And because the shin is so much larger than the instep, the odds of the low kick landing are greater and the effectiveness is greater. The next topic, ground fighting applications. Unless you are really familiar with ground fighting, if you do not have a thorough knowledge in the areas of judo or jujitsu, you will not be able to apply these techniques effectively. What we're looking at here is called okuri erijime. It's a gi strangulation technique, very common to judo. Also, we're looking at a takedown method. I'm applying an arm lock with a triangle hold with the leg, and I'm also using an arm lock with the arm. Again, locking with the leg and arm. Now again, the purpose I'm showing this to you on this low kick tape is that if you do not have a thorough grounding in this information, you may have to stick with the striking area. Here, what I basically did is use a leg attack, taking my opponent off balance here and exposing his head area for the choke, as i shown there. These techniques will be thoroughly, thoroughly covered on other tapes in the library. So unless you have a thorough grounding in this information, you cannot use those techniques. So what has to be used is, when ground fighting range is met, you may create the distance to allow you to use the knees into the rib cage, as I showed there, and the shins into the rib cage, or working into the low shin kick into the collarbone and head area. Again, you'll notice in your grappling practice that you may find yourself on top of or in a position to be able to create the distance necessary for low kicking. So remember, just because you're in grappling doesn't mean you have to stay there. Some of the targets you'd like to use, again, are the rib cage, the floating ribs, the collarbone, which can be exposed, the neck, and the temple are also target areas. Here we're looking at a tackle drill. Now again, the beauty of having both the striking and the grappling arts under your belt is that you can make the necessary transitions from both. Now instead of maybe swinging around and going into the grappling mode here, I created the distance for the low kicks. Here what you're looking at is an arm manipulation technique. Now I can use that to pancake him, as they call it in wrestling, him over onto his back and continue grappling and pinning and arm locking, or I can go into my low kicking repertoire and follow up with knees and shin kicks, also stomping kicks. Here we're looking at an evasion movement in that palm heel manipulation that I showed you previously with the grip to redirect my opponent and follow up. Here we're looking at almost a full commitment with the double leg attack. I'm using a sprawling technique, and again, rather than continuing with grappling, I work in with the kicking techniques. Here we're looking at various low kick applications. I'm using a stomping or a heel kick there. So if you notice a common thread here in the low kicking 
applications with ground aspects is the sprawling action. You do not want to be trapped into that area. Again, the same manipulation there. We're looking at shin kicks to the base of the skull and to the side of the head. Again, from here you can work into Jujigatame, the cross arm body arm lock, or take a step back and work into the low kicks. What you're looking at here are the beginnings of becoming a total fighter. Being able to work from grappling range to kicking range to striking range. Here we're looking at that redirection with the palm heel as I showed previously again. You can also go to the back of the knee and the ankles as I showed on volume one with the stomping kicks. Also driving in the knee here from the sprawling position. When you sprawl back, there is a slight moment of hesitation as to whether you should go into grappling or not. Here we're looking at a reversal. We almost saw a successful double takedown where he had me on the back. This is one of the last places you want to be in in a real fight. Sure, while on your back, you can use various techniques like leg guarding or scissoring your opponent, but he may be able to straddle and mount you in this position here. The more time you give your opponent to maneuver, the less of a chance you have to escape. So what you have to do is create the strategy immediately. As you saw there, as I'm falling on my back, I'm already thinking bridge and turn, bridge and turn. Here you'll see it at a full speed. I'm going with the force of the double leg takedown and following up with the knee kick here. This concludes volume two. Thank you for purchasing my video.